Hello everyone! Welcome to Piccadilly Stamping. I am just going to, we're on like a 30 second delay, sometimes it's 40. So what I'm going to do is go to my page while we're on the delay and see if this came up. So I can kind of see, sometimes my computer runs a little bit slower. There we go. And then I can try to invite a few people in. Um, everyone let's see is there anyone in here yet oh wait 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 is this showing me yes there's people in here my goodness okay I didn't realize that that went that quickly okay I see Karen Jones and Joy howdy Joy and Laura and Jean and hi Jamie thanks for coming by and Kelly and Brina oh wow got got quite a few people. Did William make it? Looks like Bill made it. Madison made it. Thank you, Madison, for sharing. Um, Brenda, hello. I got your call. I just haven't called you or Laura back this week. I'll get to it. Trust me. Anyway, I have a lot to discuss with you tonight, so while people are filling in, I'm going to do some um, tips and tricks. I'm going to try to tag another person in here. So I just tagged Kristen Tatum and today Kristen Tatum signed, hi Kathy, she signed up to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator with me on our team. So now I've got um, Karen and Kristen and Kristen. <laughs> so woo -hoo, hoo hoo I'm gonna have to try to keep the two Kristens apart separated. They, they spell their names differently, so that'll be, that'll help, but I'm scared I'll misspell one name to the other, but anyway. So, hi Trina. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things, and so since there's enough stuff, I want to get going. So, one of the things that um, we get, or we can order, rah, is these um, clear mount cases. Now this is for a wood mount stamp set. This one's for a clear mount stamp set. And this one is for when you get a wood block that's just like one. They come in this. Well anyway, we can order these. And I wanted to show you, um, I think these are the clear mount cases. These are probably the ones I use the most. But I wanted to show you these and I wanted to show you why. So on this one, I have our little 3x3 three three, um, this is how I store my 3x3 three three envelopes for my 3x3 three three uh, gift cards. And this one, right now I am storing in one of them the new Stampin' Chamois, and I'm pretty impressed with this product. Um, it fits perfectly in here, and it's great for cleaning stamps with just water and nothing else. Um, we did have some, let me see, I got one right down here. Do you guys remember when I demonstrated this um, kit? We have kits where you can make these cards and stuff. Well, they come with a stamp set. So, I have a couple of them. These are the two current ones, Soft Sane and, and Lots of Happy. That was Lots of Happy that I had. I take them because they're photopolymer stamp sets. And then I can keep them out because these are current stamp sets that I can use. Um, on any of my gifts if I need just that right saying. Like say I need um, love you lots. Like that one's not getting much use so I'll have to make Madison a card. But anyway I have them on hand and so I can use it for that. So I also, this is my favorite way of using um, one of these clear mount is 
Okay, so these are like our current, and I'm going to be using these glitter enamel dots tonight. And here are the Share What You Love Artisan Pearls. Here are the brand new. I haven't even used these yet. They're metallic, and they come in gold and silver. The faceted gems. I use these a lot for the centers of flowers. And we have faceted dots. So it's just a way to have all the current stuff right at my fingertips. And if I need to go, like I'm stamping with a friend on the go, I can grab it and go. On the wood mount case here... Here is, well, like, here's some doilies, or doilies. These are doilies. These are sequins. So here's the current doilies. There's two different kinds, and we're actually going to be using these tonight. Um, I've got, these are the tinted faceted buttons. I, oh my gosh, I got a project coming up, and you guys will see these. These are so beautiful. Um, these are sequins. Here are the new blossom elements that we're going to be using tonight, so I'm just going to actually leave that out. Um, some of the library binder clips that are in, and so I just stack these up. I have these sitting like in a row so I can pull them. Now I'm going to show you something else that I do. I actually store my watercolor pencils, um, and these was, this is old DSP from um, oh, I don't know, years ago, probably five years ago now, but this was when I was, I actually, you can put it right down in, they have like a space in them when you open it up. So I measured it off and I cut a space and then I lined them. And so this one says pearls and rhinestones. And so that's exactly what I keep in there. And then I have them all lined up. I just didn't do these because I have a mixture of things in them and I wanted to see what it was that I was grabbing because basically I've been lazy and I haven't marked my stuff. I've been very busy, but they just line up right here on, I've got a coordinating desktop over here and they just line up there. And so these are awesome. So I'm pointing this out for a couple of reasons. One is for the new Stampin' Chamois. It fits perfectly in there. My favorite thing about this is it keeps it moist. If it does dry out, you can um, just re-wet it. You know, I clean it out by just running hot water through it and then put it in here, but that doesn't seal super tight. And I'm gonna come up here, like, let me see if I got more light or something here. Does that help? Can you see it doesn't see, seal super, super tight so that your chamois doesn't um, like mold. And I'm loving that. Okay, so that was my little tip. And actually, we're going to be using these tonight. So I'm just going to keep that out too while I'm at it. That's one little tip for organization. These things, I'm just going to show you up close because these are really stinking cute. Look at those. Aren't those beautiful? Ah! I love them. And then I'm going to show you these up close. These are the glitter enamel dots. They're brand new and I just got them. Can you see the glitter in them? And I'll show you what I'm going to do with this one because that's kind of creative. All right, let's get started with stamping. I do want to tell you though... Um, and I'll have to look at it because I marked it. So the Stampin', the Simply Chamois is on page 206, and the coordinating cases are right here. So you get for the, let's see, standard, it, you, $7 for it and for one of the cases, and you get four of those cases. So you could use it for your chamois and your embellishments. Okay, that's it. Let's keep moving. We got a lot to do. So I'm going to put these to the side for a moment. I'm going to start off with a simple card because the last card is a little bit, that's the water coloring and it. it's got a little bit more to it. Let me move my stamp chamois. So tonight we're going to be using Coastal Cabana and black and smoky slate for just a teeny, teeny little bit. And let me get out my information. So I have got this white piece cut at two and seven eighths by three and 
three and seven eighths, and then I've got a coordinating layer three by four in um, the black. And I've got some scrap paper here. I've got a base of Calypso Coral. I just think this color is so pretty. I'm going to be using, I'm going to stop a minute because I've been rambling and let me look and see if anybody has any questions. That's a nice color combo. Yay, Kristen made it. Hi, Barb. Hi, Shelly. Woohoo! Okay, so I'm going to use a few stamp sets tonight. I like to mix and match. And we got this gorgeous grunge, and I'm going to just use this stamp from it. This, this is a new one, and I think this is really cool. And I just want it as a light background to my project. Let me get this stuff out. Um, this pop of petals, which I didn't know if I was going to like this at, at, as much at first, but I'm telling you. I'm really digging on this thing and you'll see why. But we're going to use this little image here and this image and then this has a coordinating punch and if you buy the two together um, you get 10% off and I love that deal on there. So this punches it out. I think I used this last week so you guys know that. Um, I'll be using a half inch punch and then I wanted the same um, since we're going to use flowers, I wanted the saying from a big thank you. Uh, friends are flowers in the garden of life. So those are the three stamp sets that I'm going to use. And now let's get stamping. I should get myself a piece of scrap paper. Because you guys know that I like to test. Oh, here it is. I like to test everything that I'm stamping. Now, um, for the most part, I don't need this mat because I've, I'm using rubber stamps, but it's not going to hurt anything. So I took a card base, and this is a half a sheet of cardstock, um, 8.5 by 11, cut in half, and then folded in half to make my card base. And I'm going to do landscape on this. We're going to start with the Coastal Cabana, and since this is one of my new stamp sets, they're a little tougher to open but and we're going to use that I'm going to stamp a background so we're going to use those three little flowers and I'm going to test that out here isn't that pretty I love it I love it in this color too Karen if you are watching I bet you love this color too hi Tara thanks for coming by hi Sherry hi Nancy oh wow full house Okay, so we're going to start, and I'm just going to stamp kind of off the card. That's why I have my um, sheet down. And then I might do just a little bit more. And I want to see what this looks like, so I'm going to pretend that I've got my image. So see how I did a little background stamping there? Not much. Don't need much. But I get to pull out my cool chamois now. I am so glad that Stampin' Up! came up with this. I am. I'm thrilled, 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 thrilled. Okay, so that part's done. Now let's go move that and let's go to some background stamping. Some people like to do a lot of texture in their cards, like um, embossing. I tend to like, okay, now I'm trying to do this, but this is an old stamp, so I have to do this. But I'm, I'm kind of a... I don't know. I like stamping. I remember the first time what it was like for me when I actually stamped my first image down on paper and how I thought, you know, it was like, ooh. So <clears throat> I'm going to ink up my stamp. I've got one of the new ones coming in this color. So this is fairly light. And this is just a background. And you, I don't know. Let me move this up since. I can't tell. Can you see on my scrap paper that it's just like a light, I'm just doing a very light background. So it's just to give a little texture to the card. 
and I think I'm going to do it kind of center bottom. So grooving on my stamp chamois, it's that easy. Laura, if you're on here, you were wanting to know about cleaning. Okay, and then cleaning stamps. That's all I'm going to use that slate with. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use um, some memento ink, and I'm going to take that um, photopolymer image and ink that up. And I always test my... And I need to do a different test. I, I'm thinking my... There, that's not bad. I'm thinking my um, memento is getting low, and I have coming to me, but it doesn't come until Monday, another re-inker. So... And I'm just going to stamp this up in this upper corner. And I'm going to give that a minute. Just, I'm not rocking it, but I just want to make sure that that transfers because I think my, my ink needs to be re-inked. Okay. I'm going to set this aside. Well, actually, I think I'll glue this on first. So I'm just going to use my green glue. Hey Bill, are you watching? Just want you to know that your um, dad responded to me. Okay. So, I've put that on my mat, as you can see what I'm building up here from the back forward. So now I want to take my image. This is like very specific. When you cut it out, I like to cut it upside down so I can see what I'm doing. And I need to always make sure that I have my stamped image going the right direction so that I'm stamping it out. So I'm just going to Calypso Coral it up. Yay. Okay. This is a different one from the one I did last week. So if I want it to go there, I need to have it down towards the bottom. And I'm going to stamp this twice on my... Okay, now I can close this. Then I'm going to take my punch, and all you do, I don't know, I did that quick, and people who don't know, these are so that you can stack them, and they, they stack very nice, or they stand very nice. I actually have mine standing, but you just pull that back, and it opens it up, opens your punch up. So I'm going to stick this in. After I just get done telling you, make sure you know what side you have it, I then stamp it on the wrong side, so, but that's okay, well... We'll flip it around, and then I'll just cut this off and flip it around. Okay. There we go. Then just for closing it up. So I've got two of these images. This ink dries fairly fast. I'm going to take my bone folder, and all I'm going to do is just give a little curl to the flowers just to give them a little bit of a texture, dimension maybe. Okay. And then I'm going to stick a little bit of glue right in the center. You don't need much. You can use a glue dot if you want to. This is cheaper. That's why I do it. I'll be honest. Who doesn't like to save money? And then it only takes a second to get that to, I don't know if that will show up better if I take the paper out. Then what I'm going to do is I have a half inch punch and a scrap piece of black. And I'm going to punch out a piece. So I have that little circle. And I'm going to glue that to the middle with just a little bitty dot.
Isn't that awesome? Okay. Now, what did I do? I just had them. You guys, I was like, I'm going to get these out because I'm going to need them. I just had them. Here they are. Hi, Vivian. Hi, Marsha. Thanks for joining. Okay, so these glitter enamel dots that I was telling you about, you can do this a couple of ways. I think I'm going to do the paper piercer today, but I love them. I love these. It match, This matches Coastal Cabana so pretty, I and I look, love that black behind it because it totally pop, pop, pops. I didn't quite center that, but you get the gist. So, I'm going to take, this is our um, silver baker's twine, and you can do a couple of things with it. I'm going to unroll a bunch of it here, and I'm just going to go here on the back, and I like to zigzag it around, so I'll do it a few times, and then... Trim it off and I'm going to tie it in the back. Just a good old fashioned granny knot will work. Okay, then I can take it and kind of move it around if I want. If I want it to come down a little, which I think I do, so I'll just move the whole thing down a little. But what I like is, it's something as simple as this baker's twine. It gives, let me hold that flat. Let's see. Can you see the silver? I don't have to stand up to see if you guys can see that. Do you see that silver? Okay. Something as simple as that, I think, just gives a little bit of extra. I'm going to use a glue dot and just put, hook a glue dot on the back of this. And um, I think I'm going to have that flower live there. And I'm going to come in and flip it over and add some dimensionals. And we're going to pop this up on our... A lot of times, um, you guys know I've said more than once that I suck at bows. I do when I'm on live. If I have time and I'm not shaking, I, I do much better. But So this is one way where if you don't want to make a bow, if you have if you're bow challenged like me, and you don't even have to worry about how good that knot looks. I mean, maybe I should trim that down a little bit. But you've got that little bit of an embellishment there that looks nice, and I'm just going to center this without having to fuss with a bow. Okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Can you guys see that? Well, let me stand up and see if that shows very well. Yay! Thank you for the hearts and the loves. Okay, so I told you that was kind of my quick and simple one, and I love this color. I just love it. I mean, I, lo I still love my Bermuda Bay. You guys know that, but I do love this color. I just love these. I love them. All right, so now I'm going to put this away so that I can get out and get to the... Um, get to my next card and this one is kind of a detailed thing so I want to definitely take a little time here we're gonna do a little embossing this is gonna be a great way look at this color combo blackberry bliss flirty flamingo and soft sea foam it's two returning colors and a brand new color 
so I'm crazy about it and I didn't know how this would come out but it comes out beautiful so I mean shall I just brag about myself or what I like my work, I guess, is what I'm saying. Uh, Emily, thanks for joining. Okay. Um, what do I got here? Oh, I wondered what that was. Okay, so we're going to do a little bling bling to this. I started off with a card base of... Um, Blackberry Bliss. This was an in color a few years back and they brought it back and I am very happy about that. It's a very deep, rich, rich, like, I don't know, it's just, it's gorgeous and it really is gorgeous with gold. Um, I'm going to do a, this is something that's a little bit different. This isn't Whisper White cardstock, and I'm going to hold this up. This is three and an eighth by three and an eighth, and I don't know if the camera will show it or not, but it is our shimmer white paper. I can't tell if the camera's showing it or not. It's got little flecks of shimmer in here, and I'm going to set that aside. And what we're going to do is, let me show you what stamp set. We're using Accented Blooms. This is brand new, and when I saw it, I said, I got to have it. Why do I have to have it? Do you guys recognize this? I have used this over and over many times in videos. This is the Taylor Tag Punch, and I saw this, and it, it fits this perfectly, and I was like, yep, got to have it. So, um, we're going to be using the Hello and then this image. Now, I'm going to grab out my embossing buddy. Um, I know most of you know how to emboss, but if we have somebody who's new that I do not know, maybe they don't know how to emboss, and so I definitely want to make sure that people understand the importance of such a little bitty tool. This is a little piece of fabric that's filled with chalk, I believe, and you wipe it over your surface before you do any kind of embossing. Why? Because we as humans have oils on our fingers and oils will attract the embossing powder that we're going to be using, which could cause smudges and stuff on your projects. Nobody wants smudges on their projects. I'm also going to be using a Versamark pad. Um, I will say this is my original Versamark pad that I had when I joined like seven years ago with Stampin' Up. All I have done is re-inked it. Now I know it looks pretty bad, but all I've done is re-inked it. We have Versamark um, re-inker. That's all I've done. So this stuff like lasts. Um, I'm going to take the big image, the big floral image here, and I'm going to ink it up with the Versamark. And I'm gonna make it pretty inky. This is kind of like a glue, and um, it's really pretty, especially on this color that we're using. If you want to do like background stamping like I did with this other card, um, it'll give like a watermark look, so it's very, very light, but um, it does show up behind it. So this has more than one use. Is that nice and inky? Did I get everything? I think so. Okay. So... I'm going to try to place this as best I can in the middle of this image. This might be easier for me to see on the dark surface without getting my head in here, I hope. Okay, if this doesn't come out very good, I have a backup plan, and I don't think it came out very good, but I'm still going to show you. So. This is another thing. I label each of mine. Um, our, our embossing powders come in these little bitty um, tubs, but what I like to do is I get cheapy dollar store. These aren't even the Ziploc kind. They're just cheapy. And I stick a plastic spoon in here that I can scoop out. This is embossing powder. This is gold embossed powder. And 
I can put it over my image like so. I really want to coat it. And then tap that back to get all that excess that was flying around on there out of the way. Okay, then I just reuse it every time. So I wanted this more centered, but it's gonna work for what we're doing. This is our heat tool and ours has two settings and I love that. And just for um, like video purpose, hi Beverly, thanks for joining. Just for video purposes, um, I'm gonna just show you a little bit and then I'll move on. So um, turn it on, let it get hot. This is the high, this is low. I love that about that. I had a different heat tool um, until just recently, actually, and I love this. So some people heat it on the back, um, especially when you're doing vellum. You want to heat it from behind, and some people do it on front. I kind of go back and forth, but let me get a little spot kind of done, and then I'll pull this up close to the camera so you can see what it does. Because it does make like a raised, um, let me get it high, just a minute. Okay, I'm going to stop because I'm going to come up here. Do you see how it's shiny and raised on the one side? Can you see that in the camera? So this still hasn't been heated, but this has. Yeah? Anyone? I don't know if I'm on delay, but okay. I think you get it. I think you guys can see that where it turns it and it's turned it gold from that kind of brown color. Awesome sauce. There, are. now I see people. Great. Okay, so I'm going to throw that away and or not throw it away, but put it aside. So with the magic, I already had one pre-done so we could just keep going. Now comes some water coloring, and I want my chamois, and my scrap paper, and my watercolors. Oh, I don't have enough room. I'll do this. Okay, so... Um, like I said, this is the um, shimmer white um, cardstock, and it does, it's not like the watercolor cardstock, but we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be using aqua painters. Aqua painters come in two different sizes of paintbrush, and you just fill them with water and then you dip them into your ink. But today, today I lost what I was doing again. How can one per person prep so hard and then be so negligent? I don't know. So I have filled, I have another set and I have filled mine with alcohol. Why? Because alcohol dries faster. So we're going to start coloring. Now these are the new cases so they are a little stiff at first. This one is really stiff. I need like a crowbar but once I get you know I actually shouldn't have what I have done is as you see that there's a little pile of ink there is I have squeezed my container together to get a little ink off of the pad and onto what I'm gonna call the palette part of my stamp pad or yeah stamp pad Okay, so you can see what I just did there. So I'm going to start with the lightest color first. Oh, that's really inky. Or not inky, wet. So I don't want it to be too wet. Okay, I'm going to start with the lightest color first, which in this case, reds tend to, to 
wear more. I'm making sure that my brush is cleaned out and I kind of like it on the medium to dry. And I'm just going to pick up some ink and smear it around so you can see I'm good and inky. I'm going to test it. This is a very light color and I'm just going to fill in some leaves. I do not color the whole image in and I'll show you when I'm done what I mean by that. I like to leave white spots. I think it looks artsy. That's that's my term, artsy. Okay, so I just do that. Now, I'm going to let that dry. Take out the color that's in my brush. Go to the next color, which this is Flirty Flamingo. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get some decent color. Test it out. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to do my first little wash through and I always, I'm going to start in the middle because I would think that the middle to going out to the outside of my flowers would be the darkest. So, and that was darker than I thought. So, and I'm going to fade it out as I go. And I don't know if you can tell how it's washing here, but go on to this one but it's darker in the center and then it's lighter towards the edge and I'm not coloring all of the petals okay so we're gonna do this in steps I'm not coloring all the petals like completely solid so now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna take some more color and I want to get that a little bit darker. I'm going to go into that middle and I'm going to dab some color and since this one's bigger I might go through and hit some of those. There we go. So see how I just kind of brought a little life to that? Okay, take the color out of my brush Normally I wipe this, but I think I'll just set this aside. It's alcohol, so it dries really quick. Um, I'm going to go back to that green. This is a very subtle green. Now I'm just going to pick up color. I'm not going to juice it up any. I've got kind of two little points there, which I kind of like because I'm going to come in here through the centers of my leaves and give just a quick brush of color again taking that color out now this is a deep dark vibrant color and I'm going to actually wet this one down a little bit so I'm going to put a little when you squeeze the end of this the tube will fill up with a little little liquid okay see how dark that is so I want to start off a little lighter I'll mix it up a little bit and I'm going to go back in here and I'm just going to do the color and I'm just washing it over the image. It doesn't matter if it goes outside the lines on this and you can see I've really kind of wet it down. Um, this paper handles water a lot better than our regular paper. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add more color and I'm going to add pretty, pretty dark, pretty vibrant there. And I'm going to come back in and I'm going to just give this another layer of color. There is nothing perfect in nature and any way that you do your watercoloring is going to be perfect. Okay, I'm going to let that sit aside for a minute and I'm going to take this away and I'm going to stand up again and show this right to the camera because I want you to see that, I mean, I do not have an art degree. Um, this was super simple. No, I'm not using watercolor paper, Wendy. I am using the Shimmer White. 
so it's the shimmer paper and I don't I don't know if my camera picks it up or not but on embossing and I think this I just think this is so awesome and it didn't because I was using alcohol it did bleed through um, but it's it's almost dry actually you guys because I used alcohol in there so um, okay let's move on I'll show you the next part let's get this card made okay so I am going to use a piece of three and a half by three and a half foil piece of paper now Joy always tells me to punch something out. Was it Joy? Someone? Or Kathy? One of you guys told me um, a trick, which I need to do. So I'm going to take my two inch circle punch so that if I ever need a piece, this stuff is, tends to be a little bit more spendy. So she's like, take something out of the middle. No one will know. So there you go. Whoever gave me that tip, I did it so I don't get yelled at this time. So I'll have this for another project. Anyway, um, I'm going to glue that, and I did this so that there would just be a 1 8 inch border around this. So I'm just going to glue that down with some of my green glue because this gives me a little bit of wiggle space. Just get a minute to the other thing is is it gives the image Ooh, I really like this you guys I wish my camera was so good that you could just see this the way I see it but I really really like it okay let's go back to our card we're gonna do portrait this time instead of landscape and I'm going to have it go on here, but I want to get, and I just had it out. Sure you did, Pamela. Just like everything else. I have something. I lose it. It's on the floor. That's why. So remember me telling you that we had um, those doilies and I was going to pull one out? I pulled one out. This is the Flirty Flamingo. These are brand new this year. And what I like about it is you've got colored on one side. But if you want to just have white, you can have white. I love it. But I'm going to use the Flirty Flamingo since it kind of coordinates with this. And I think it looks pretty darn sharp. So all I'm going to do is reach over here for my snail, which is really fast fuse. But I couldn't find my snail and I have fast fuse left. And I'm just going to put a line down of that. Should be snail, by the way. We no longer sell fast views, so. And I'm gonna just um, attach the doily, whatever I like. Let's see, there, I like that. That looks good. Right to my image. And then I'm going to take my green glue again Go around my image or around my the outside of this and I'm gonna glue this mm, kind of in the middle kind of more towards the top because that doily takes up a little space isn't this pretty oh my gosh it's so pretty okay just when you think you can't love it anymore right oh but I'm going to use that hello image right now. And I have a piece of, and I've not stamped it on this, so we're gonna see, but this is, I wanted it to match, so I'm using a piece of the shimmer white. Let me stand up and just see if the shimmer white shows. Nope, not any better. But I'm gonna use that, and where did the image go? Here it is. So I need my drying out Blackberry Bliss here again. And I'm going to ink it up. Now, little tip. I um, have noticed that sometimes when you have these 
um, images that are um, like a flat image instead of these more raised ones so that it's a the surface is flat that sometimes you can get coloring that um, maybe there's an area that isn't doesn't color as well um, Stampin Up used to sell these they don't anymore but you can go to like a beauty supply house very low grit lightly 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 you sand the surface of the block and it helps and I had that with this one and so let's see if it works the other thing is sometimes you can take your um, image and ink it up like take the, the stamp pad to the stamp okay well here goes I can't tell if I'm on there or not but we're gonna go I'm gonna give it just a minute to transfer that ink so I get a good transfer that's another thing if you stamp too quick sometimes okay not so bad I think I did like it on my other sheet so I'm gonna take my tailored tag punch and center it punch it okay now comes the fun part we're gonna take some dimensionals and stick on it because we're gonna raise it up and we're gonna take some of this mini um, gold mini sequin and I'm just gonna cut off a schmidge that's my technical word like that so that I have a little piece and I'm going to take a glue dot again and on the back side there's there's a front side there's a back side to the sequin the back side isn't as shiny so on the back side I'm going to kind of put right in the middle and hook my glue dot I did that wrong I already did that wrong I'm sorry that glue dot bit the dust on the front side the shiny side I'm going to attach it because I'm going to attach this underneath this image because I just want a little bit of that kind of coming out so then I'm going to take the backing of my dimensionals off and we're going to stick this right on here it's so hard to get it straight when I'm I, I can't I guess I could put my head underneath of this then you guys could see my gray hairs so we don't want to do that um okay Ta-da! Okay, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. <clears throat> then I'm going to take these, and I actually think that this color, these little, um, oh my gosh, these things are super, super cute. I'm going to take, and I think um, this is Calypso Coral, really, but honest to God, you cannot tell. It matches so perfectly on here. I'm going to stick one of these right there with the glue dot. Now, I will say this. This would only be mailable because I know Joy's on here. <laughs> um, this would only be mailable if you put a um, piece of like you're going to want like a piece of cardstock over this before you stick it into the mail because otherwise this will rip the um, envelope. Words are hard. So let me pull this out and this out. So we've got one that's 
Took a little bit more time to get this effect, but super, super pretty. And we've got one that is super pretty, super quick, but um, okay, I'm gonna turn now and see if my camera has caught up. No, Joy, I really do not want you to be um, my hair inspector. Um, it is thinning out in my old age and it's turning gray, so no. <laughs> Um, thank you, Joyce, for the gorgeous comment. Comes out so special. What a great look for a card. Thank you, Jean. Very beautiful. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, Pamela Wood made it. Hi, Pamela. Nice to see you. Um, so this was tonight's cards that we did, and I'm, I'm pretty proud. I don't, maybe I need to come up and kind of show this. In the light so you can see that gold goodness oh Marsha I'm old to me isn't that I just think it's so beautiful and it's so pretty yay okay and of course don't forget this fun one now before we go into our drawing you know that I have to do my whole vision spiel but I want to make Look, I love my printer. Look at my printer. Is it my printer or is it the person who printed it? It's wonky and it's smudged. So it could be user error. I have a special for you. So I'm going to do a weekly special. So if you place an order between now and June 27th by noon Central Standard Time, you will get a free gift of faceted gems. Let me show you what those are. These are our faceted gems. I love these for insides of flowers. We, we cert I certainly could have used one. Um, they come in gold and clear. I certainly could have used one for the inside of this. I just, I don't know, I liked the color theme, so I stuck with it. But. They come in three different sizes. These things are amazing, especially if you have the Daisy Punch. So if you order $50 or more between now and June 27th, um, 2018 by noon Central Standard Time, you can get um, this free gift to me. I will mail it to you. You need to um, use host code C9KJWBAD. Um, to get to my shop, just click the blue button on the Facebook page that says Shop Now. That'll take you to my store 24-7. Um, and thank you so much for your order ahead of time. So that's this week's special. I'll be bringing you a new one next week. Also, everybody who shares my video tonight gets entered into my free giveaway how do you do that? You just click the share button right now and post it to your wall and um, it will notify me on Facebook that you have shared it. I stick your name into my entry box. I go through and I do read the comments. Sometimes it lets me comment, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why, but I have my IT person coming over um, on Friday. so. She can help me out with that. Anyway, um, use that host code if it's $150 or less. If it's $150 or more, you are eligible for host um, rewards, and I want you to have that. Please, word of mouth is my um, survival right at the moment with my business trying to grow it. I'm on Pinterest. I'm on YouTube. Just remember that it's Piccadilly Stampin' with no G on there. I'm on every Wednesday night right here at Facebook. Tell your friends. If you want to join my team and get great discounts and get like the inside perks and stuff, um, let me know. I'd be glad to have you again tonight. Kristen Tatum joined my team. Yay! I'm so excited to have her and have another stamp sister. I have, this company is phenomenal. I have never had um, 
I've met some of my best friends in the whole entire world quite literally through Stampin' Up! So I am proud to be a representative of this company. You can find my blog for more inspiration, piccadillystampin.blogspot.com. Okay, what you guys have been waiting for is the drawing, right? Okay, got a lot of names in here. I am mixing them up. I cannot wait, wait, wait. Okay, I already see. I'm going to just go ahead and take the people out like Madison and Bill because they tell me, don't even, and Brenda, they tell me don't even bother. But I always put them in here because I always think it's so sweet that they do um, share my video for me and help promote me. Okay, so here we go. Josh Wenzel, <laughs> you won tonight, yay! Okay, so Josh, I am going to get yours, it's across the room. I went to a class and I made these fantastic cards. Look at these, they're all, I mean, this one says, birthday wishes. I made these fantastic cards um, at this class. This is a new set and I will be demonstrating this soon. So I will get this um, put together and get that to you and you have a set of matching cards that you can send out. So share my video again um, and I will put you in the drawing for next week. Thank you so much, Josh. You have been an absolute wonderful supporter. You and your wife, Kristen. So here's my story. I've got so many Kristens in my life right at the moment. <laughs> I'm having a hard time keeping track of them all. But um, I'll get these to you, whether it's through your mother or send me your uh, mailing address and I'll mail them to you. All right, you guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.